Welcome back. In this box, we've got the brand new 2025 Asus Chromebook Plus CX15. It's an entry level to mid range clamshell Chromebook with a 15.6 inch Full HD display. This is one of the first new Chromebook Plus models to feature the Intel Twin Lake Core 3 N355 processor, and it's got the updated Chromebook keyboard as we first saw on the Samsung Galaxy Chromebook Plus last year. I'll show you how much I paid at the end of this video. For now, let's get into the unboxing and take a look. And thanks to Tobin One for sponsoring this video. More on them and their docks that I've been using with my Chromebooks later on. Okay, let's start by taking a look at the USB-C charger. So we've got the UK power plug, of course. And then we've got that much smaller Asus style sort of puck charger. And we can see it is a 45 watt USB-C charger, and it's nice to see it in that smaller size that Asus supply in their Chromebooks. Let's get the Chromebook out itself, and we'll get this box and packaging out of the way. Subscribers will know I wasn't the biggest fan of the older generation CX-15's build quality. We'll check out for any keyboard flex in particular when we open this one up. Color-wise, Asus say this is rock gray painting, so there's a number of different finishes and colors available both in the CX-14 and this CX-15 range. Definitely worth checking out my video from last month when I talked about those new lineups and you can get more information on the different colors and finishes there. It is all plastic. The feel of the lid, sort of difficult to describe. It's not that really smooth um, plastic like we saw on last year's CX-15, just the regular Chromebook. So it's got some sort of texture and finish to it. Um, but it definitely feels plasticky and it, it is a full plastic build. There's no aluminium lid or anything like that on here. Feels fairly well put together. A little bit of flex there, but nothing unreasonable. Uh, quite like the different branding, having the Asus logo here at the bottom. And then of course we've got the Chromebook Plus branding up in the top left hand corner. It is nice to see we've got all rounded corners on this one as well. So. Pretty nice in the hand. It does make a difference when you're grabbing that, chucking it in your bag or just moving around with it just to have those rounded corners. So that definitely is appreciated. And the weight is not feeling too bad. So Asus claim 1.59 kg, that's about 3.5 pound. For a 15.6 inch Chromebook, not too bad. Of course, if you look at the Samsung Galaxy Chromebook Plus from last year, that one just defies all logic with its weight. But uh, yeah, in terms of the majority of Chromebooks and what you're expecting in this kind of size, not too bad. For connectivity, it's Wi-Fi 6E and Bluetooth 5.3. For ports, you can pretty much ignore the right-hand side as it's just the Kensington Nano port if you need to lock this one down. And on the left-hand side, starting on the left, we've got the charge and power LED indicator, the first of two USB-C 3.2 Gen 1 ports, an HDMI version 1.4B port, a full-size USB-A 3.2 Gen 1 port, the second USB-C port, and a headphone microphone combo jack for audio. Even with that HDMI port on this Chromebook, I still generally prefer the convenience of just plugging in one single USB-C cable from my dock into my Chromebook. And that's where today's sponsor come in, Tobin One. Subscribers will know I've been using various docks from them for a while now. That one USB-C connection into the Chromebook lets you power it and connect up your various peripherals, including multiple monitors, depending on what the dock and your Chromebook supports. I've found Tobin One's docks to work well, plug and play style with my Chromebooks, and their build quality has always felt decent. That's why I'm happy to have them sponsor this video. Check the pinned comment for my Amazon affiliate links and more, including my review videos, so you can check them out for yourself. Taking a look at the bottom of the Chromebook, and at the back here, we've got the ventilation for the processor and its fan. And as mentioned, this is one of the first Chromebook Plus models and one of the first Chromebooks to feature the Intel Core 3 N355 processor. So that's the successor to the Core i3 N305 that we've seen in so many Chromebooks now. So it's going to be interesting to see how that one performs. And up at the top here on either edge, unfortunately, we have got the speakers here on the bottom of the Chromebook, rather than them being up on the keyboard deck. With it being a larger Chromebook, so a 15.6 inch display, you kind of hope that they would have had room to have the speakers up on the keyboard deck, but we'll see what's going on there in just a minute. 
So let's go ahead and open up the Chromebook. And yeah, the display of the Chromebook does go back 180 degrees against the body, which is always nice to see. And then we've got this new full-size keyboard layout. So this new Chromebook keyboard layout was first seen on the Samsung Galaxy Chromebook Plus from last year. So in summary, it means we get the new quick insert key over on the left where the launcher used to be or the everything button. So we've got the new design and functionality there. The launcher moves to the bottom here, branded with the Google G, so that's the new home for the launcher. And then we've got some of the other keys, like the uh, backlit keyboard keys up on the top row here, so it does look like this model will have the backlit keyboard. Jumping ahead a bit, here's a look at that backlit keyboard in action, and you can use the shortcut keys on the top row to turn it anywhere in between, so all the way down, and gradually getting brighter as we turn it all the way up. And we've got the new number pad design layout over on the right hand side. So again, exactly the same layout as we saw on the Samsung. One point to add on the keyboard layout though is that it doesn't look like we get that new accessibility key on the top row that we saw on the Samsung Galaxy Chromebook Plus. I guess some things unique to this one of interest. So it does look like we've got this smaller enter key in the UK, whereas we're used to the return key being that larger size combining with the key above. So it does look like they've broken that down in this case. Um, otherwise, the spacing of the keys all looks really nice. And the key travel itself, let's take a look. So yeah, slightly deeper key travel on this one. Feels like it's probably going to be fairly nice to type on. Obviously, if you want to see the full review when I publish it, do subscribe and tick the notification bell. As for that keyboard flex, whilst there is some, if you push hard on it, certainly when you're hitting the keys with some force, not really noticing anything unacceptable. As for the touchpad, it is plastic, it is fairly smooth. It's a little bit smaller in size than I would have expected for a Chromebook of this size. Uh, the click mechanism yeah, feels okay. The taps, it just feels a bit hollow, a little bit more on the cheap side. I just put it on the desk just to be fair to try that as well. Yeah, it's just when tapping, it just feels a little bit hollow, a little bit on the cheaper side. So I'm gonna get some power on the Chromebook to be able to start it up for the first time. That's normal for any brand new Chromebook. And then we'll get set up with my test user. We can take a look a bit more at the spec and certainly at the display on this Chromebook. And I'll run you through all you need to know about that. As it's going ahead and downloading the latest update to Chrome OS, I realized when I was telling you guys about the keyboard, I didn't mention the new design, including the function key, as you can see down in the bottom left-hand corner. And then of course, the shortcuts in the top row will have a assigned F value to them as well. So yeah, one other change on the keyboard just to be aware of. So set up in Chrome OS and things are looking good with my test user. Just to recap the main spec of this Chromebook Plus model. So it's got one of the new Intel Twin Lake processors that were launched back in Q1 this year. So this one has the Intel Core 3 N355 processor. That's the successor to the fairly common Intel Core i3 N305 processor that we've seen in a lot of Chromebook Plus models up to now. So it claims a 6% boost in multi-threaded performance and about a 3% boost in single-threaded performance. So it's gonna take a bit of use for me before the main review is published to see if I can really tell much of a difference in day-to-day -day use. One of the big changes though is that you're gonna get updates to Chrome OS through to June 2035 with this new processor compared to June 2033 with the older processor. I've also got eight gig of low power DDR5 RAM in this model. There are model options claiming to have up to 16 gig, but we'll see how common those are. And for storage, I've got 256 gig of storage, but unfortunately it is eMMC. It's certainly feeling snappy enough on initial use, but do subscribe if you want to see that full review. Software wise, you're getting all the benefits of Chromebook Plus, including the baked in AI, like help me read as I'm showing you here. And you've also got the option to subscribe using the Chromebook perk for one year to the Google AI Premium plan, which I believe is now known as Google AI Pro. If you want to learn more about Chromebook Plus, do check out the video I published recently. I'll link that one in the top right for you now. Checking out the display, it's a 15.6 inch full HD display, it's IPS and it's anti-glare. And it's in a 16 by nine aspect ratio with a claimed 300 nits of brightness. Initially looking at it, I would have thought it was nearer the 250 level, but I perhaps need to get a bit more used to it. And color wise, it covers 45% of the NTSC color space. 
The bezels, so they are noticeable, but not too bad. And they claim a 87% screen to body ratio on this one. And at the top of the display, you'll find the full HD webcam with privacy slider. It just feels like they could have made the slider easier to operate. Before we try out a bit of gaming, let's cover off the price. So I paid just shy of £400, that's about 540 US dollars for this, brand new. That was from Very in the UK, who seem to be the only place with stock at the moment. As with most Chromebooks, a sale isn't uncommon, so it'll be interesting to see if we get any discounts on this one in the future. Amazon in the UK look like they'll be getting stock at some point, but you can see the title is just wrong in so many ways, despite having the Core 3 N355 selected, along with the right options for the display size plus the RAM and storage. My Amazon affiliate links are in the pinned comment if you want to check them out in your region to see if stock is available. Testing out a bit of Real Racing 3 here and it's looking good. Do let me know in the comments though what you think of this one and do subscribe if you want to see the full review when I publish it. Ensure you've clicked on the bell to get notifications turned on as well. Check out the video on the left next if you do want to see the full lineup of Asus CX14 and CX15 Chromebooks and Chromebook Plus models for 2025. Otherwise, the video on the right is the YouTube algorithm's choice for you. Cheers.